Okay, let's do some more examples here so that we can get a better idea of what's going down. Sophia has three tickets to a concert. Mm, I wonder who she's going to go see. But Yolanda, Michael, Kevin, and Marissa all want to go to the concert with her. So to be fair, Sophia randomly selects two people who can go with her. She's got three tickets. Sophia's using one, right? She can take two people with her. And we're making the assumption here that they all get along and would be fun at the concert together. So with that being the case, we want to determine the sample space. Remember, that's all possible options. That's a sample space of the experiment. In other words, list all simple random samples of n equals 2. So we're going to pair Yolanda up with Michael, with Kevin, with Marissa, and then we're going to systematically do this. So Yolanda with Michael, Yolanda with Kevin, and Yolanda gets paired with Marissa. Then I'm going to say, all right, what do we have Michael going here? So Michael can, has already been paired with Yolanda, so we don't want to do that again, but he has not been paired with Kevin or Marissa yet. So Michael gets paired with Kevin, and Michael, oh, I forgot the L on Michael, gets paired with Marissa. All right. Then Kevin... Here has already been paired with Yolanda. Kevin has already been paired with Michael. So then we would just want to move forward. Kevin gets paired with Marissa. And then those are my choices. So how many options are available here? Six, right? Total of six options. So compute the probability the event of Michael and Kevin attend. The probability of Michael, Michael, and Kevin. How many times does Michael and Kevin occur? Just once out of how many total? Six. Good. So this is one out of six that Michael and Kevin can attend. What's the probability that Marissa gets to attend? No matter who she's going with. What's the chance that Marissa gets to go? She could go here. She could go here. She could go here. How many options does Marissa have to go to the concert? Three times, right? Different people, but that's not what it's asking. Just Marissa in general. So three out of six, which is... One half. So by that same rationale, how many options does Yolanda have? Or Kevin? Or Michael? Yeah, they all have half options, right? One out of every two, they could go. Now they'll go with a bunch of different people because they don't all have to go with the same one. But everybody has that half of a chance, that um, opportunity to go to the concert. Nice. So looking at that possible, is this classical? Yes. Because I'm saying, what are my options? Based on the options available to me, this is the classical approach. I'm not doing an actual experiment. That's empirical. This is just based on the options available. All right. Let's try this one on. Suppose a survey asked 500 families with three kids to disclose the gender of their children and found that 180 of those families had two boys and a girl. Estimate the probability of having two boys and a girl in a three-child family using the empirical rule. So here we are. The empirical rule says that based on the data given. So based on this survey, this data given, what is the probability of having two boys and one girl? 180 out of that 500. Good. So this is the probability of... That's a P, two boys and one girl is 180 out of 500 families is 0.36. When you plug that into your calculator, empirical rule saying based on the data given, that's the likelihood that we're going to get um, two boys and a girl. Now, Compute the and interpret the probability of having two boys and a girl in a three-family household using the classical method, saying what options are available, 
assuming boys and girls are equally likely. Now, when we do something like this, we like to have a, let's scoot this up a little bit. We like to have a um, tree diagram, it's called, all right? So I'm gonna start over here and it's equally likely to have a boy or a girl and that is your first kid. Then let's say you have a boy first, it's equally likely to have a boy or a girl. If you have a girl first, it's equally likely to have a boy or a girl and that is your second kid. You see how we're doing this? Then for your third kid, if you had two boys, still equally likely to have a boy or a girl and it's equally likely to have a boy or a girl, or a boy or a girl based on every single one of these. And that is your third kid. Right, so if I wanna look at my sample space, we're saying what are my options available? I can have a boy, boy, boy. So the first option, if I have three kids, they could be all boys. My next option could be a boy, a boy, and a girl. So I could have two boys and a girl. My next option could be, a, oh, let me change my color up here. Maybe this will help. A boy, a girl, and a boy. Do you see where we're going through with this? A boy, a girl, and a boy. Or I could have a boy, a girl, and then another girl. A boy, a girl, and a girl. I could also have a girl, a boy, and two, another boy, right? A girl first and then two boys. It doesn't say what order did they come in. It just said what could I have? A girl with two boys. I could have a girl, a boy next, and then another girl. I could have two girls and a boy. And then I can have three girls. And those are my options, right? Okay, so that's my sample space. My question is saying the number in my sample space will then end up being eight, right? Let's check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's why I thought I counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I just want to double check myself. So the number in my sample space is eight. And then I want to say, okay, based on this possibilities, What's the probability of two boys and one girl? Now, it doesn't ask me which one's first, which one's second, what's the order of birth, right? It just says two boys and a girl. Two boys and a girl, regardless of whenever they're happening. Two boys and a girl. That's all I see. Is that all you see? All right, so how many of that went down there? Three out of the eight. So you can put it that way. All right, so three out of the eight. What was my probability based on the sample that I had of those 500 families? 0.36. If I just kept going, yep, then we'd end up with 0.375. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the law of large numbers. So I'm, that's where I want to bring that um, into here. The more, oh my, simmer down. The more trials, trials is what that, that's an R. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Try again, shall we? Some days are better than others. You guys are hopefully getting used to my terrible handwriting. Hang in there. The more trials you do, the closer the empirical rule gets to the classical method. Or not empirical rule, empirical method. The more trials you do, the closer the empirical method gets to the classical method. Right? So that's the key. That's the law of large numbers. Law of large numbers law of large numbers wow i just saw that that's terrible let's try again shall we 
N-U-M-B-E-R-S. The law of large numbers. That's what the law of large numbers means. And so I like this example because then you can start seeing, hey, even with 500, that's a lot, right? Even with 500, we're getting really close. And the more we get there, the more accurate that is. What if I had only surveyed these 180 families and they all happen to have two boys and one girl? then this would be 100% probability. Well, that's not accurate. You have to be able to have more families. The more that you look at in terms of your data value and your sample that you have, the more accurate your probability is going to be. All right, that's the law of large numbers, and that's how it plays out. Just want to make sure that you see that. Okay, so a subjective probability, our last little piece of vocab, a subjective probability of an outcome is a probability obtained on the basis of personal judgment. That's what makes it subjective. What do I think about this? That's what I'm asking. What do I think about this? That is personal um judgment and that's what makes it subjective nice we're starting this probability i feel like we've started strong keep working hard guys